All right, come on in here. We'll get started in about a minute, guys. That's down. Perfect. So it's Bugsy's got donuts out there? Bugsy's got donuts out there, so grab one and then get in here, guys. I text Heather, Jay, and Brian that I'm deadly sick. They need to do sales meeting. I told Brian to do a top 10. I called him. Kelsey started crying. She was laughing so hard at my fake cough. He's like, I'm flying in there. I'm going to find a top 10. He said, I think the best top 10 I have is that number one when I'm talking about Shannon's dark roots. I'm like, oh, boy, we got to call this off. <laughs> so everyone have a good weekend? All right. A couple more gathering here, and then we're going to get this thing going. First of all, and I'll remind you again at the end, Trunk or Treat is Thursday, October 26th. Um, so we're going to be promoting like crazy. We're, we're starting to get trunks. I, what do you got, five, six right now? Ten right now? Good. So you did good yesterday. We want 20 trunks, and then we want the soup, and we'll, we'll do the, the hot dogs, but soup and chili and stuff like that. So I always think that's a great event. Who attended the event last Thursday, the grill off? I thought everyone, I see some of our grillers in there. Thank you, thank you, guys. I thought, I always think that's great. Brian, how you doing? Come on in. That's how I am sick of you. <laughs> so, um, we were just playing with you, Brian. We were just playing with you. It's okay, it's okay. I said, Aaron, I said, do you think his heart can take it? She says, yes. For 85, he's strong and healthy. <laughs> um, let's kick our video off. Aaron, you want to get that light? Scott, you want to get that light? Thank you, thank you. See, most people don't lack vision. They have a vision. If you ask them, hey, do you want to be rich or poor? The average person would probably say rich. Do you want to make a big difference in the world or make none? I'd like to make a difference. You want to contribute or not contribute? I want to contribute. I want to be happy or sad? I want to be happy. So it's not that you don't have a vision, it's that you have a depth perception problem. You have a pacing problem. You think your dreams, those feelings, those memories, that change, that body, that relationship, that amount of money is really far away. And because you believe it's that far away, you've created patterns, belief systems, thought processes in your life that perpetually keep it that far away. I'm not suggesting to you that it's gonna be easy and that it's gonna happen like that. What I am suggesting to you is that if you think it's really far away and you pace yourself and you do things occasionally, it'll always stay that far away. It'll always be there. It'll always be a mystery. What do you do on the days that you are not motivated, that you are not inspired? Do you have the habits and rituals and disciplines to step up and do the things that you know you need to do all the time, not some of the time? And when you stack up those all the times, those are the inches that you fight for that separate the greats from the average. You know, really the best ability in life is availability. It's showing up and doing things consistently on a regular basis that most people just can't have the discipline to do. And that's what discipline is. Discipline is the ability to do things when you don't feel like it and when you're tired of doing it, when you're fatigued, when you're bored with doing it. If you believe you're far away from something, you will pace yourself that way. You are jogging in the marathon of life where the winners are running 15 to 20 percent faster than you. Aaron, I think you said an agent sent that to us, right? Jessica did? Jessica, are you, if you're in the house, thank you. Can we get the lights in the back? Thank you, thank you. Um, and I think that's a great segue uh, into Jay's class. Jay, why don't we let you start with kicking that off right now for us, which starts this Thursday called Dare to Dream, right? Yep. And um, I'll be kicking that off. We do have a guest speaker, uh, someone that's been crazy successful uh, in an aspect of the life uh, that is still a secret. Jay does not want to disclose it, so we'd love you. We did a little conversation with them yesterday about what we're going to do. Uh, so uh, them and I will be doing this on Thursday, but we're excited about it. And I think, you know, that's really about, we've talked all the time about what is success about? It's not about doing big things. It's about doing little things and creating habits and having the discipline to do things. And so we're going to try to talk about lessons we've learned in our life and our success of growing this business and their life and the success of what they've done. And so we're really excited about kicking this thing off. We'll have a video going out today. Uh, it was Heather's idea, and then Heather disappeared on us. So Jay and I shot it by herself. Yeah. Oh, she was here. She lied to me. <laughs> See? Is that subordination? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
and um, there's a little blooper in it, and we're, yeah. we were laughing our ass off, so we kept it in there, so we're going to show it to you. So, Jay, why don't you kick right. it off? What's it about, and what's the, uh, what's the mindset behind it? Again, the six-week program, again, it's just when a lot of people are starting to shut down, this is a way to consistently, just like the said, to have the discipline to start doing the things that you need to do, the small 1% activities that you need to do day in and day out. And so with accountability, a lot of times people will um, – well, the one thing I'm not going to do this this year because it hasn't worked for six or eight years is to have accountability partners. So we won't have that, but we're going to have accountability teams. Um, Insanity doing the same old shit over and I over know. and over and not working. I'm like, I'm not going to do it again. Brain so, damage. Brain damage. You you had a brain before you started doing these I things. Know, I know. <laughs> um, but, again, it, I always focus on mindset because this is a time when you need to be planning your goals. We'll be doing dream boards again. But, again, the whole mindset is – to get together with like-minded agents that want to go ahead and start their year for 2024 now, and so um, you're going to be—we're going to have great agents. We have Mike Evans coming in. Uh, we have Rachel Skratsky. Uh, we have uh, Jennifer Morgan and Mike Miller. We have Deb Sizek and Ty Bartuzek that are all going to be in here. Uh, some of those we haven't even had speak before in our six-week program. So I'm excited for them to bring their insights in and what they're doing right now to be successful. So, and then we're going to tie it in too, because we're going to, I've, uh, this will be the third year we're doing our mindset challenge. Uh, last year we had about 50 some people that started it. Um, and then if you don't, it's a daily 90 days. Like if you don't do it, you get kicked out of it. So we ended up with like 18 people at the end. Um, but I'm excited to start that instead of starting it November 1st, um, we're going to start it on October 16th and just started a couple weeks early. And then we're going to tie that a little bit into our six week program as well. So, um, and then, so I don't forget too, we have KV core that's going to be kicking off. There's a lot of people, we sent out a survey. We had, you know, um, quite a few people that responded and just said, I just don't know enough about it. I don't, I felt like we've been having lots of promotions, but we're going to just have on next Tuesday from nine to 10, we're going to have an agent panel in here. That's going to go over what they're using KV core, just some key takeaways. And then we're going to then just do a light, light training for about a half an hour. And then from 10 to noon, we'll have me, uh, Shelly, some IT people in here. And then we're going to help any agents that want to get their contacts inside of KV Core or just learn how to add contacts. We'll be there kind of like a workshop. You can come and go as you want. And then we're going to also be kicking off that day um, kind of a, uh, I guess, a contest that the more that you start using KV Core and some of the tools that we have, you'll get registered for a chance to win an iPad. They're gonna give away some um, promotions to when you do some boosting in there, that you'll have some free boosting. Or uh, IT has some of those share cards that, uh, where you can just tap and get contacts that we're gonna give uh, six months free for like three to five share cards as well. Uh, and then the other thing that we've got just a lot going on, uh, if you're on a team, when you don't sell, when you don't sell houses, you got a lot of time to figure shit out, yeah. guys. <laughs> That's where we're at right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if you're on a team, I'll be getting in touch with you. Ethan, my contact at KV Core, um, wants to uh, help any of the team leaders that are using maybe a different CRM or not sure how to use uh, the C uh, KV Core with a team. He's going to do a special training just for you. So I'll be finding a date from them and getting in touch of all the team leaders or anybody that's running your CRMs to make sure we have that one hour kickoff on how KB Core can help your, your team and your business. Outside Perfect. of that, that's a, I don't know. There's always something else going on. But. Talking about KV Core, and I see Tasha back there. Tasha, you've used KV Core for two years probably. KV Core is really, really a great program. And we've went through it in so many mastermind groups. Um, so we're surprised about the lack of activity we have of people using it because we know that if it's used, it can be a lead generation tool and it can be a tool that can help you manage things. We're talking about creating daily habits and following up with people and doing things that we know is going to help, uh, help you grow your business. In my opinion, KV core is the best thing Berkshire Hathaway has rolled out in many, many, many years. We tried Sage that didn't go so well. Um, and there's been some other technology things that have took, you know, it's supposed to take a year and they've took, some of them just never got finished. <laughs> I mean, uh, Scott is, Scott understands he's been in the home services world. So, but KV Core, um, you know, Tasha, would you agree? I mean, it is a very powerful tool and there's enhancements that you can do to it. And then Kevin, I see you right there too. You've been using it for what, for probably a couple of years also, haven't you? Five years. 
I mean, you guys love it. So guys, dive into it. It's going to be a tool that's going to help you be more productive. So try to get engaged that. Love to see you show up at Jay's class. You do not have to show up if you just want to pop in for the second half and hear the speakers too. They're welcome to do that any of the weeks, but we'd prefer sure, them to be yeah. there the whole time, right? That would be preferable. Yes. yes. So, so uh, why, why, do we, why do we understand why do we do this class? We know that people mentally start slowing down as the weather starts getting colder and we head into the holiday seasons, right? We believe that the beginning of the year is not January 1st, it's October 1st. The activities you're doing today, the, the things you're doing to connect with people, to build relationships, to set the stage for next year starts now. And the activities you do today are not going to determine what business you have in the pipeline this week or maybe even this month, but it's going to determine how you start the beginning of next year. So Jay is a master at putting this program together and making sure that he's helping you get focused in on the right things to make sure you have a successful beginning of next year. And then last, the, the agent panel that we are having next Tuesday is with Kevin, Tasha, and then Diane Hughes. So those are the three that are going to be talking from 9 to 9.30 next, next Tuesday. So come get their key takeaways, and then, and then we'll help you however we can to get that started with KV Core. But Thank yeah, you. sign up for the class. If you have any class, uh, one of the questions I do get about that six-week class, when you register, it'll just ask you if there's any days you're going to be missing. So you can, if, if you can't make all six, just let us know. And then we're going to be recording all the top agent speakers as well, so that can uh, be watched later on. So excited for you guys. The video that will be sent out um, later today, we'll have a link to register, or I'll send another registration link with it. Okay. Thank you. I'm being told that Quick Buy is waiting on a Zoom call, so are, are you talking about that also, Jay? So you want to kick her off or announce her? Sorry about that. I, Jay just started talking, and I didn't know you were on hold. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Perfect. And Go Jay, ahead. you're saying okay. that our engagement at Quick Buy has picked up substantially over the last couple of months. Is that correct? Yeah, Good. ever since I, yeah, I kind of helped take over in May, and I, it seems like we... So ever since you took over? Well, <laughs> no. I mean, it just picked up. So. It's just to be expected. Yeah, I know. But... Brady, um, I'll let her go ahead and talk, but she's been our rep. She's here to help you guys, and so she's awesome. I mean, whenever somebody reaches out, she's very available to make sure that everybody owns, uh, knows the program. Again, a lot of people, and she'll probably talk about this, but again, right now is a great way just to use it to generate leads. They understand that less than 10% are probably going to take a quick buy offer, but if you're out there letting them know that that's another option for your sellers, it is just going to help generate more business for you. But and, I'll let Brady And go I think ahead. as the market slowed down, this is a more viable offer for some sellers because we've got mm -hmm. pretty much on a daily basis. I think all of us as managers are getting calls from people talking about sellers who are upset, wanting to cancel. I mean, I was on the phone the last two days on one of these. It just uh, this is an option for some people to say, listen, I don't want to mess with this. Let's do this program. So take it away. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, really happy I'm here today. Hi, everyone. For those of you who do not know me, which I probably know a lot of you because a lot of you have been certified. Uh, my name is Brady. I'm your account manager over at QuickBuy. Um, so happy I'm here today. Um, Josh, could you let me share my screen? Because um, I have a quick uh, PowerPoint to share. Um, but just like uh, Vince was saying and Jay was saying, the stuff that you do today um, isn't necessarily going to generate business, but it's going to generate business for next year. So when I did, um, res when I was a residential agent, I would, I, I always said it was all about the follow up because you know I, I would have to follow up with people sometimes for three years <laughs> before I bought and sold their house. So I, I get what he's saying. Um, I am unable to share my screen right now. Is there a way that? No, I, I can't can... let you. <laughs> if if oh, I you can't if I turn me. off my screen share, your audio goes away. I see. Okay, well, what I was going to talk to you about was <laughs> business plan. No, I mean, no, 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 I'm still going to talk about that. But what I was going to talk to you guys about, I guess I won't have the uh, PowerPoint to share. It, it, it's fine. Um, was Quick Buy is a program. Um, we offer, we empower agents such as yourself to deliver immediate or I buy offer solutions to their sellers. Um, so just like Jay said, about 10% of people might choose these options. Majority of people are going to be listing traditionally. This is more of a way for you guys to use this as promoting yourself as a local expert. I don't know how you guys lead generate, but we offer um, stuff to bring to open houses. We offer social media um, advertising. We offer email drip campaigns. You guys can send out to your contact database. 
Um, but really right now, uh, what I was going to focus on today, and I won't take up too much of your time was um, the sellers who in this market do need these options and then business planning for 2024. So right now um, we have the immediate solution. Um, I don't know how many of you have been to the, through the certification training, but that will be today at two. So I welcome anyone who either hasn't been through or who has been through and needs a refresher to join us at two o'clock. Um, but really right now, um, Sellers who are trying to sell and who are contingent right now, um, this is a very viable option. That is a lot of what we're seeing right now. Um, sellers who cannot afford to be contingent in this market because inventory is so um, non-existent. Um, so with the immediate offer, sellers can sell their property and not be a contingent buyer. And then if they need it, they can do the lease back. And then people who are looking to maybe a little bit scared of going into holiday season, um, and they don't want to list their home, we also have the lock option right now. So the lock option is allowing the seller to take the immediate option, um, lock it in, and then list the property for 150 days. So right now, if the seller takes that option, they have to that they are listed until February of 2024. Um, so, so right now, um, the, again, the types of people who are going to need this is going to be about eight to ten percent. Um, it's going to help sellers that are contingent and help uh, people who might be looking to move to different states or seniors or anything. Um, people who need to sell now, pretty much. Um, but the whole point of our program is to help you guys lead generate. Um, so I would ask everyone to join today for the certification again that's at two o'clock and then we also have a incentive just for ambassador agents and it would be much more dramatic if i could show you my slide um however we are anytime an agent sells a home on quick buy's behalf uh, we are offering an extra fifteen hundred dollars when they close um so i would recommend everyone to come like jay said we've seen a lot of uptick especially in ambassador i think since he took over we've sent out about 40 offers in a few months. Um, so I welcome everyone to come. We'll go over the program. We'll go over some marketing ideas and help you guys prepare for 2024 because I'm in total agreement that does start now um, planning as opposed to waiting till January. So thank you guys for having me here. Um, in the future, I guess I'll send my slides <laughs> in advance. Sorry about so, that. Um, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, but I appreciate you guys letting me be on here. Um, again, today is going to be the certification training to go over, get you guys certified, go over the options, uh, what the program is, and I would um, invite everyone who has already been certified because we add a lot of information all the time, and um, it never hurts to have a refresher. Thank you very so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of your Aaron, meeting. Aaron, we, we need to go through some of our struggling programs and assign those to Jay. <laughs> for real yeah since he took over it, it, I, I remember I, I last time i quit <laughs> jay said <laughs> um, um but thank you guys i, I I'll, I'll let you guys get back to your meeting and um hope to see everyone there at two o'clock today thank you and very jay, much if you could share the link for me that'd be helpful <clears throat> thank you all right um market update yeah, I was in the camp till 60 plus days ago that the second half of this year was going to clearly be better than the second half of last year because the second half of last year was probably down 20% over the previous year. And we are definitely not trending that way. In August, um, we did over 1,000 transactions. Historically, September is a pinch up in activity from August because we get through Labor Day and it seems like we start picking up activity again. We are not going to hit 900 transactions new penny transactions in the month of September, which really surprised me quite honestly. Um, and so I don't know why we're not getting more people off the sidelines, but that's the reason I think it's so important for Jay's class. You know, we're pushing you guys so hard. What can you do to build relationships, to show value, to get out there, to get face to face with people? Um, you know, I love what Heidi said. Heidi said, I don't buy leads, I buy lunch, right? Um, there's never been a time that we need to communicate more frequently, with more clarity, with more value to build stronger relationships than we ever have before. There's still business being done, but there's a smaller amount of it. We're seeing the listings every time we're looking at them. The number of, is it down from last week? So what do we have? 743 is non-new construction. That's new construction. That's new construction. So we have 193 completed new constructions. That was at 140 completed new constructions two to three months ago. 
So those have clearly slowed down and building permits are substantially down. So remember building permits are down yet the number of completed houses we have is substantially up. Okay, 631 on existing. So that's down substantially from where it was last week. Um, so 631 has came down a little, but the number of buyers in the marketplace is less. This is telling me that the number of listings is less than also from where it's been over the last couple of weeks. Bottom line is you guys got to be in the right mindset. You got to understand there's business out there and we're seeing a lot of the part-time agents internally in our organization. So I can only imagine what's happening at Nebraska Realty and EXP and Keller Williams that has way more part-time agents than us starting to turn their license on to go back to inactive status. Um, we've been waiting for this day for a lot of years in this business, right? For three, four years, we're like, oh, surely, you know, 62% of people selling two or less houses last year, people are going to send their license back in. What's, it looks like finally maybe that time has come. So I think that's an opportunity for those of you in this room, which are here to do this, to make a living full time, uh, where maybe we'll weed out some of those people and some of those deals that they're getting, the one or two deals a year they're getting, start flipping to us. So we're going to keep you abreast of this, but to me, September's numbers being down 100 plus transactions from where we were in August was really, really surprising. So as we're heading into these months, plan client appreciation parties, do pop buys, get face to face for coffees or lunches, uh, you know, whatever you can use, home buy, any excuse you can do to reach out to people, to build a meaningful relationship and show your value, this is the time to do that. So get in Jay's class. If, if you're thinking, what do I need to be doing the next three months? Jay's going to guide you and get you there. Um, brain chart. Can we put the brain chart up there? I gave Erin brain pills because she keeps forgetting stuff. And every time I look in the basket to see if she's took any of them, they're all still sitting there. <laughs> so I don't know what that, t the pills are too big. <laughs> the brain pills are too big. <laughs> this, the sheet, um, and, and I know it's, it's funny. I've been talking to Heidi Harris. I think she's going to go do this test. Adam Briley's went and did this. Dr. Amen, who was at, was anybody in Vancouver uh, for Summit God probably five, six years ago? Dr. Amen was there, and that's where I first saw him. And then uh, uh, he has an office in Florida, Chicago, and Orange County after a Rethink Council meeting about four or five years ago. Shannon and I stuck around for an extra three days because it's a three-day process to go to see him to get these brain scans, which is very scary. And, and, and I will come back and show you guys sometime my brain scan. There's like two fingers poked in the front of my head, like indentions in the front of my head. I'm like, oh my God, what is that? And they're like, you are classbook ADHD. I'm like, I did not need to pay you $3,000 to tell me I'm ADHD. I can self, I, I, I got that. I understand that all by myself. But here's a sheet that we'll send out to everybody. We have them down front if you want to pick up one of these things. But these are just activities to do. It talks about vitamin D is really important, uh, that if you have allergies, that swells the brain. A swollen brain is not good for you. So here's things, supplements, activities, exercises uh, that you should do on a regular basis. So um, I think the thing that's pretty obvious, drugs, marijuana, <laughs> alcohol, eating fatty foods are not good for the brain. Uh, crack, crack, and <laughs> Sarpy County, is, it's all about the crack. Oh, crap, crap, crap and crack. Uh, crack is crap. Um, <laughs> don't throw me off like that. <laughs> um, but pick that up, guys. But I mean, part of, I think, what we want to do around here is I always talk about people for years. One of the things I had to learn is I had a couple of people when I was recruiting them like, you're talking about coaching, you're talking about coaching. The agent doesn't want to come over here because they think all you want to do is them to work more hours uh, to make more money. And that's actually the exact opposite. We talk about coaching because we want you to work less hours to be more productive. We want to figure out how do we help you put systems in place so you can have better balance in your life. One of the things we talk about all the time is how do we help you have a better quality of life? And so part of that is, is mental, right? Your health balance so you don't create burnout so our goal i would tell you as a leadership team is all about how do we help you have a better life and so i would pick that up it's a it i sent this off to um uh, stacy briley because adam would never got back with me and said hey walk through these notes do you agree with them does this make sense to you um but sweating 20 minutes a day was a critical thing um, and just walks through a bunch of foods. And so we'll actually expand upon this and add to some of this stuff for you guys. But I hope you, I find this stuff very interesting. I would take some time to look at it and we'll send it out and we have sheets for you to pick up. 
If I, I take brain pills, do you see my office? I take brain pills all the time to deal with your shit. I, know, right? I need patience. I need, I, need the, I need the fish oil in my head to say, okay, it's okay. Managers complain about agents. Agents complain about clients. Leadership complains about management. It's just we all have the same problems. It's just with different groups of people, right? <laughs> but we all love each other. Um, so the last thing that I am extremely excited about, um, and we talked in a couple of mastermind groups, and then we had a conversation with Andrew Undram yesterday, is Mark Stark. Who has seen Mark Stark speak before? Uh, he was Explosion three years ago. Mark, to me, is one of, if not the best speakers, that is a guy that has ran a brokerage that's grown up in this industry, uh, there is in the marketplace. Mark Stark and Andrew Undram, which has been to our last couple explosions, a uh, very charismatic person, also doing a lot of stuff with Alan Dalton, he started a, a new program. They are going to kick off the beginning of the next year for us. January 11th is the date. Thursday, January 11th is the date that we settled on. Um, they're going to come here, and what we're going to do is, in this room, there'll be three of them giving one-hour speeches. Mark will on one subject, Andrew will on a separate subject, and they have a guy, Matt uh, Mullen, who is the top agent um, out of uh, Mark's old company in Arizona will be here. And then I'm going to put a rapid fire. We're going to put, Jay and I are going to put a rapid fire panel together here for you guys, uh, kind of like we had at Explosion. It's going to be a mini explosion from like 10 o'clock to 2.30 or 3 for you guys. We'll serve lunch here. But January 11th, um, uh, Mark's leaving the warmth of Vegas and Arizona to come to Omaha to kick this off. I think it is a great way for us to kick off the beginning of the year, quite honestly, and we're excited about having them. So please, please block that out in your, your schedules. It's going to be four hours of, of intense uh, learning that I promise you you're going to take ideas away from. And so this is for you guys to be here, and I promise them we will pack the room. There's no reason for us not to, to be here to listen to these guys. They have some great, great content that they're going to share with us. So I'm excited about that. With that, Mr. Scott, can you come up here and let's run through some things. Let's, uh, why don't we run through the love letters first. We continue to get questions. Are love letters legal? There has been some, um, there's been some lawsuits over this uh, that have actually went through the court system. If you could talk about those and, and, and how we can use those and so forth. First up, Jay, cocaine was not on that bad habit thing, so. <laughs> Don't worry about it, baby. <laughs> Time to go back. Um, <laughs> Brian, why do we need a top 10? We have Scott. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, the love letter things, it, it's, it's, it's still fluid. I mean, what, what kicked this thing off was is that the uh, um, state of Oregon had passed a law that said that love letters were illegal. And that prompted uh, NARS general counsel to write an article about whether they were a good idea or a bad idea. And uh, basically the letter, you know, the idea is, is the letters are basically walking fair housing violations because their whole point is, is to tell you about their family, tell you about their kids, give you an idea of what they look like, you include a picture, you give all, all of that is, you know, it, it's, those are all protective classes within it. And so the idea is, is if you're providing this love letter and the seller chooses to go with their offer, against a different offer, it could be for a violation of fair housing law. Um, and, and so that, that was the concern, which is, you know, this, this could lead to fair housing complaints, this could lead to discrimination, um, and, you know, th whether, do, do they make any sense to do that based off of those concerns? And so Oregon had passed a law saying they wouldn't, that was m almost immediately struck down because it's a violation of the, the uh, right of free speech. You can't tell someone, <coughs> you know, pre-contain pre what they're going to write because you're worried that someone might get uh, discriminated against. That's just not how the First Amendment works. And so that was, that law was, was pat or removed and uh, we've just been in a flux. And so, you know, there's still articles that come out about whether they're a good idea or not a good idea. I think without question there is fair housing concerns in these letters. Um, and, you know, it, it uh, and we've had an agent reach out to me and said that she felt like she had that experience with a, you know, she had a couple that were gay and she felt like they didn't get, they got turned down because of their letter. And so she doesn't, doesn't use them any longer. Now, who knows whether that's true or not. But the, the problem is, is that it's free to file a fair housing complaint. And it's not free to respond. 
to a fair housing complaint. You have to respond to it. You have to go through an investigation. It takes a long time, and and you know if they find something, they can move it forward to a hearing, or you know you can get it dismissed. But it takes a period of time. So the question is, is whether it's worth it. What you know, is it beneficial to do it or not beneficial to do it? So at at this point, they're not illegal. Um, they they can't be illegal. They're never going to be illegal. Um, but whether you want to use them or not is really kind of a, I guess a personal preference. Um, NAR's opinion on it is, is that it's better not to play that game or if you're going to do it um, as a buyer's agent at the very least, you want to be not really part of, the, part of the process and our agents should be having discussions with their sellers as to whether they want to accept them and if they don't want to accept them, they should be very clear about that, that we're not going to take them or we're not going to look at them um, because sellers are also subject to fair housing so they can get hit with complaints too. So there are risks, and so those are the risks that go into it. I don't know where else to go with No, that. that's good. Uh, I also want us to get in a little talk about NAR, an update on what's going on with this antitrust class action lawsuit. When we were in this meeting two to three weeks ago, we talked about Anywhere, which is the parent company of Caldwell Banker, of Century 21, of Better Homes and Gardens, of ERA, of Sotheby's, and of Corcoran in New York City, had settled the lawsuit for $83.5 million dollars. One of the reasons the defendant said we took that settlement is because financially we think that we need to take this settlement because we're not sure we can ever get more money than this. Financially, this company is strapped. They're not doing very well. Quite honestly, anywhere, anywhere their self said one of the reasons we settled this is we could not continue to afford to fight this thing. We needed to settle this to try to give ourselves the best chance to be a financially viable company moving forward. Is right. that fair? Right. Since then, we've had a couple additional things where Remax is settled, we've yep. had some MLSs already start changing some rules. So could you maybe give a talk of where we think MLSs are going and yeah, kind so of where it, this thing's trending and where does Berkshire Hathaway stand it, on this Yeah, it, it's so interesting enough, they, they actually felt like um, those settlements, why, you know, seems like a ton of money, you know, it's over 100 million between those two companies. Um, that actually is a pretty small dollar settlement based off of the claims. They, they said that these, these plaintiffs' attorneys, the class action attorneys, these are billion dollar cases. We should be, you know, get judgments of billions of dollars. We should be able to settle this for billions of dollars. And to get 80 million, 50 million is somewhat a drop in the proverbial bucket against what their claims were. Uh, and that's why they think that they were very, very important to the plaintiff's class lawyers putting in there, this is the most they could pay. They were very big on noting that that was the most they could pay. Because really, it, it, it looked like sort of a, a you know, again, seems like a lot of money to us, but you know, against the claims, seems pretty small. That it probably wasn't a very good settlement for this this plaintiff class action because they're going to end up because the class is millions and millions of people, millions of buyers, and so the idea in this class that they're going to end up with you know pennies on the dollars part of this class action settlement. And again, we don't know what the final terms of that settlement will. We will know October 16th because that is when the hearing is on the, the confirmation of the settlement. Um, the other thing is, is that's when the trial starts. So one of the trial starts, <clears throat> I think it's the Illinois start, starts on October 16th, and uh, you know, uh, Berkshire Hathaway's ready to go. They're, they're ready to fight this. They think it's a, they think it's a bad case. Um, they said that they will not be looking to settle. They've looked at the proposals, they've rejected them, um, and they'll, they're, they're <coughs> planning on going forward. Um, and so that's, that's what's going on. And, and the plaintiff's attorneys have actually done a lot to drop a bunch of claims because they're a little unsteady with what they're, they're out there too. They, they don't think they're that great anymore and they're trying to narrow it so they can confuse it. That's, that's the idea is they're getting rid of state, state, uh, state claims because they have more evidence in than they want to get. So they're trying to narrow what they're doing. The other thing that's happening, is, as Vince mentioned, is, is that we are seeing changes in MLSs. Uh, Bright MLS, which is New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, and, and the District of Columbia, 20 million consumers have changed their rule. They used to have a required you know, co-op payout. You had to put some number in there. They changed it to zero, uh, and they changed it to zero in August. And so far, um, the impact that Long and Foster, one of our companies, and Fox and Roach, a Berkshire company, has seen on commissions based off that change since August has been zero. See no effect. It hasn't changed anything. Now, <clears throat> another big, the biggest MLS in the country is California. The California regional MLS is the biggest MLS in the country. And they have had zero payouts for a very long time. Um, and they hadn't seen much action with that. But this market, uh, the COVID market, and how easy it was getting to sell things had prompted a bunch of uh, listing brokers in those towns to start offering zero. And it prompted a lot of how do we 
handle these things. And it basically be, became kind of a negotiating uh, a toy by, by the listing agents, which is, I'm going to offer zero. That's my opening offer. My opening offer is zero. And so they started negotiating. They would start negotiating the commissions. But of course, the forms aren't set up properly for that. And so it created a bunch of situations where agents were having brokers prepare documents that were going back and forth between the parties. They couldn't put it in the purchase agreement like you can't put it in our purchase agreement. And so in December of 2022, California changed their forms, not in response to these class action lawsuits, but in response to how the market was going, which was commissions were now being negotiated. And California has adopted within their purchase agreement, what a surprise, the term of the commission is now part of their purchase agreement, their state purchase agreement form. And the way they've set it up is, is that they've amended their forms and they've gotten rid of forms like buyer's exclusive agency and now they have broker compensation agreements. And this is used almost on every transaction because it became so widespread that you would see zero or you'd see 1% or 0.5% as a payout. And they have now created these forms that you enter into with your buyer. It's your first step. And the way that they've gotten around the issue is, you know, we always have, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of you guys before and I don't like to use broker exclusive. I don't know how to get them to sign it. And so what they are, they're non-exclusive. And so these are non-exclusive bu buyer agency forms. Bro Which is very form. common in the, the commercial world Correct. that exists today. Correct. That's, that's how they're doing it. And so these, these forms, and I've, I've got all of them, the California Purchase Agreement is 16 pages, by the way. And then with the attachments, about 32 pages. So I don't want to hear any complaints about any of my forms ever again. <laughs> um, and it's eight-point type. And there's so many boxes to check that have attachments. It's, it's, it's crazy. And so, uh, again... These forms now, what it says is they have these requirements that say, hey, I, this is what, you know, you talk with your buyer and you say, I want to get paid 2.4 on this transaction. Now I'm going to try to negotiate it with the other side to get the seller to pay it, but if I don't get that, you're going to make up the difference. And they also have, within these non-exclusive forms, it basically has things that will trigger the commission. And so you can have, you know, if I'm a buyer and I don't want to be tied down to one agent, that's fine. You can sign 20 of these forms if you want with 20 different agents. But what's going to happen is, is if I'm the agent and I have that form with you and I write the offer, I do a commission under that agreement. If I show you the property, I am do a commission under that agreement. If I negotiate it, I am do. If I send you a list of it, that's not good enough. You have to have some sort of substantial contact that results in the commission, but that's what triggers it. And but so showing it, the property would trigger it. That's showing the property would trigger it. Even a remote showing of the property triggers it as well. It's just it has to be more than, hey, I've got you on my drip campaign and you signed this form and you bought one of the properties that was on the drip campaign. It just has to be something that shows it. And so that, that takes care of the objections that you get from buyers in those situations. And so uh, I, I talked with Mark Stark's general counsel for his companies. Uh, and this is, you know, they've been dealing with these and they're very happy that they have these forms now because it took care of a lot of the strife that they were having with trying to get these things hammered out, having title companies pay it. And so it's now a negotiated term in the purchase agreement. And if the, if the buyer is just going to accept what the seller is going to pay in the MLS, you don't do anything. If it varies in any way from that or it negotiates, then you just put it into the purchase agreement as to what you're going to agree. You have an agreement in place with your buyer that says I can negotiate it. I can negotiate my commission with the seller to get us up to the number that we're supposed to be at. You can be exclusive or you can be non-exclusive. I think if anything, this is what way is the way it's going to end up going. And so these these forms are actually pretty well done, um, and I think they make a lot of sense. And so I, I think that. If you're going to see the way, if, if things change, which I think they're going to change, this is where you're going to end up being. And it's just going to be part of your discussion with your buyers before you show them anything, which is here. This is a non-exclusive buyer's you know, agency agreement. This is how I'm going to get paid. Either one of us can terminate at any point. However, if I've shown, you can terminate it, but if I've shown you this property, I still get a commission. Or if I've written on it, I still get a commission. That's the way it protects you. We, we tend to believe every MLS is going to go to this, you can pay zero out. Right. Because we believe that probably the, the, the REMAX, which is a $55 million settlement since our last meeting, right. in conjunction with, there's, as Scott said, we're going to find out, find out here pretty soon what those settlements are. But part of the settlements are they're changing their practices with the brokerages they run. In our market, Century 21, Caldwell Banker, Better Homes and Gardens, and REMAX. So we're across the country going to be seeing pretty quickly 
what these other companies' policies are, and we think there will be enough pressure on MLSs right. to make it all be zero. Yeah, and it, California had to change their forms because they were set up like we were, but, you know, that we're going to have to, I assume, end up changing our forms too. Um, you know, and, and the, the other thing that uh, California looked at is, is that they, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all in writing now and it's all, it's all dedicated. And one of the questions I had was VA loans. What are they doing VA loans? Well, the way it works is, is that you say, hey, look, we're going to negotiate it with the seller, but if I can't, you know, get my 2-4, you know, you probably can't buy the house if, if they can't work it in. So they're going to have to change that federal form, but that's how they're dealing with VA loans, that they write on offers that seller agrees to pay it, or they inflate the purchase price of the house to make sure that the VA is paid. Yeah. We believe brokers are going to change policies. We believe MLS is going to change rules. Yeah. We believe purchase agreements are going to change. We believe enlistment agreements will probably say buyer side, right. seller side. There's going to be substantial changes. Yeah. I've been saying, and, and I believe with all my heart, in my 35-plus years in this business, there has never been a time, Kyle can testify to this even more than I am, probably most brokers in the country are losing money today. This is Which, by the way, has been great news for that class action lawsuit that we make too much money. This hit perfect. Yeah, which is one of the reasons they settled these lawsuits. Right. Um, we're making money. We feel like we're pretty financially stable and, and, and we're better operators than most. Um, hopefully that's true. Um, but I believe with all my heart and soul there's never been a time in history that you as agents that are doing this to make a full-time living to support your families and do what you want to do and us as a broker need to be aligned. We need to be on the same page. We're going to have to figure out what is the message we communicate to buyers and sellers moving forward. We're going to have to make policy changes that are going to help you guys make a good living. Right, because if this gets down to a deal where you're making 1% on both sides of the transactions, the number of transactions are not going to double and triple. The average sales price is not going to go up substantially enough in Omaha, Nebraska to cover for the difference of what you're making. We have to show value. We need to be on the same page and figure this thing out. We have a huge competitive advantage. There is no home services company in the United States that has a metropolitan marketplace. Well, there's no period, but there's no, there, we don't know of a broker in the country that has a metropolitan marketplace of 800,000 plus as we do in Omaha that has the market share we do. We have an incredible market share. When you talk about California, there's not a broker in California go through San Diego, Orange County, LA, San Francisco that has a market share in their primary market of 10%. Right. You walk around the country, 10% would be a huge market for a broker to have. So we do believe we have a huge competitive advantage of being a strong broker and having a say in setting policies. Our first policy, my knee-jerk reaction is we would set a policy if it heads the path, which we're pretty sure it's going to head, is we're going to say, my, you're going to say my broker requires me when I'm working with a buyer to sign an exclusive buyer's agency agreement. And we're going to start role-playing how do we communicate that to buyers? How do we communicate that to sellers? Because we've got to get on the same page. We've got to have open communications and dialogues with you guys what are you hearing from your buyers and sellers when we're having these conversations? Why do we bring this stuff up? Because you're going to have clients that are going to hear about this and going to ask you about this. And the, and the entire intent of this conversation is that there's, it's putting downward pressure on commissions. So we don't want that. We want you guys to make a living doing this. So there, the next year and a half is going to be some interesting times where we're going to be sitting around quite honestly as a management team talking about how do we position ourselves. We're going to probably be talking to attorneys more than we like. That'll probably be Scott's job. I don't love talking to attorneys. I attempt to avoid that if humanly possible. Um, so, you know, you had a question. We had a couple questions here. I don't know if you guys noticed this. I used to, when Scott would be up here, I'd always kind of stand like this next to him. Scott's so damn skinny, <laughs> and I'm not. I, I kind of try to stand on the opposite side of the room now when Scott's in the room. <laughs> doesn't make me look good standing next to Scott anymore. Let's get to the questions, big boy. <laughs> Gary? <laughs> oh, on the other side? Yeah, I, the, my understanding is the conversation is basically, hey, look, we're going to have to give ground on this, you know, as, as that what we're going to offer up, and I'll adjust mine based off of what we finally negotiated out. So I think that's that's kind so of. So do you think though. that listing agents coming in and getting who knows they're getting right. they're getting a commission as if they're paying the buyer's broker? Right. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, and I mean, but again, they they now know that they're gonna see it in their purchase, so they can't ignore the conversation. That was the whole point, which is they were kind of keeping it 
all of it, not really explaining it to their seller. And now, based off these form changes, it, it's a discussion they have to have. They can't avoid it as part of it because it's a term in the purchase agreement. Doesn't our real estate commission here have a rule that we can't be putting that commission into the purchase of contract or not? So they, they, the MLS it, rule, it, it, MLS it, rule is, is it's that an it's MLS not, rule, yeah, not a state commission. Not rule. a state rule because you know that. Uh, because that, commercial brokers commercial have it. Commercial all the time. Yeah, it's just an MLS rule. You're not supposed to. That's the other problem is we're going to have to change those. You know, you're not supposed to negotiate what's in the MLS. You're not supposed to put it in the first. Well, that's going to have to change. It's just one way or the other is going to have to change. Because the refrain that we hear from everyone I talk to is, it's just like commercial. That's where we're going. It's just like commercial. So. Well, that's the brunt of the defense of, right. of, of Keller Williams and Berkshire Hathaway, right? Right. That it's, yeah, it's, the whole point is it's supposedly to help them, but it's actually going to end up hurting them if they can't work it into the loan, you know, get it, get it paid that way. W one of the conversations we've had is in one of our mastermind groups, one of the agents said, well, why would a seller ever pay? Because we believe, I, I believe, that in the list agreement, it's going to say, it's going to start disclosing, here's what the seller's paying to the listing broker for the seller side. I think there's going to be a separate item, line item that says, Here what the, here's what they're willing to pay to the buyer's broker. And the conversation was, well, why would a seller ever pay if they could pay 3% to the listing side only and nothing to the buyer's side? Why would they pay anything to the buyer's side? To me, the answer is very simple. And, it, and first time home buyers is the first group, right? Simple supply and demand says the more people you have looking at your house, the more potential buyers you have, the greater chance you have of getting a bidding war and multiple offers and a higher price for it, right? Because you have more demand for the house. If all of a sudden you say, I'm going to pay nothing to that first time home buyer, well, there's just going to be a num your number of buyers. I don't know what it is, but it's going to be, if this is your pool of buyers, your pool of buyers now becomes somewhere around here because they don't have the extra money to be paying a buyer's broker on top of what they're paying for the closing costs. And so I think that's going to be the thing we're talking about. We've got to role play and figure out what is the message we're going to communicate, not just to buyers to get them to sign an, an agency agreement, but we're going to have to discuss with sellers. In the vast majority of commercial transactions, the seller still does pay the buyer's broker transaction. They don't always offer it up front, but it usually gets negotiated out. So, but there's no question about it. First time home buyers, if they're going to be required to pay their buyer, you're going to lose some of those buyers. They're just not going to have the ability to do it. Uh, Repeat you know, that question it, for those in the back. The, you know, the question is, when do we think we'll see the forms change? I, I think it's 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 going to be you know months because it's going to we're going to shake out what happens with this lawsuit first and foremost. We'll have to see what changes you know uh, Coldwell Banker makes and what uh, Remax does, and then we'll have to deal with it whenever we figure that out. So I mean, we're going to know a lot more on October 16th what they agreed to, um, and then you know the MLS is going to the board is going to have to meet. And we're going to have to discuss what we need to do next because part of it is is that. Uh, you know, Home Services Berkshire is taking the position that this is not a very good lawsuit, and so we really shouldn't be making any changes because we don't need to at this point. Lenders are going to have to change some rules too. The way lenders are going to have to change rules. Also. Yeah, you're going to have to loan change. The other thing that's interesting is in these California forms, is the seller actually signs a separate form between, you know, buyer, buyer, seller, both brokers sign a form that says, seller, you're going to pay this amount to us, and so it takes that out of the listing agreement too. And so, you know, once you put it in the purchase agreement, it's a cost like anything else, right? You have to start taking it into account how much is going to the other side, how much is going to your agent, and what that purchase price is. So it's, you know, it, the nice thing about putting it in there is it, it becomes something you have to, you can't ignore it. You have to think about it. Do you think that the Caldwell Banker and who's the other one, Remax? Well, right. Caldwell Banker, Better, Better Homes and Gardens, Gardens yeah. Century 21, and Remax would be in our could, market. Could you envision the local MLS not agreeing to all of the changes that need to happen in order for them to be so my, legal here. My, uh, my understanding is, again, based off of what our attorney is telling us, is that the, they don't think these are going to be really significant changes because they, they, they were very, you know, they, they tried to make a big deal about, hey, and there's major changes coming. But my understanding is from the settlement proposals that they were looking at, they weren't that big of changes. I mean, it's it all about put in the listing agreement what you're yeah, paying. It's more about clarity. Or? It's all about clarity, right? It's like we, they want they, it they, should, they want it transparency. They want transparency. They want everyone to know what's going on. They want to, and they want to make sure a buyer knows they can negotiate, which has been true since the beginning of time. One last question, then we're gonna have to wrap this up, guys. I apologize. So I think you said that we don't know. Like, has it changed the traditional buyer? Payout? Do we know are the buyers in California still getting 
the two well they've had downward people. so they've had with regardless of these lawsuits they've had downward pressure there for years just like everyone else has had downward pressure so it's changing in the sense that you know you five you know six became five five became four you know it just just how it's done, but what they're saying is, is that this has made it easier to negotiate, you know, so now that it's right in front of everyone, it's made it better and it's stabilized commissions. And then, of course, in the other, com the, the other MLSs that have changed the 0%, they've seen zero impact because you could always put in a penny, and now you could just put zero in. I mean, it's just such a small negligible change that it doesn't really mean much. But okay, what they're so trying to get away is, what, what the, you know, part of the conspiracy Part, part of the conspiracy argument is, is that, you know, that there was some sort of agreement between all the brokers that we would you know, keep commissions high. And God, I wish we could, but we can't. And we see that in our own market with what competitors do with you know, commissions all the time. So it's always been a free flow. And you know, if, we, if we had some sort of amazing power to keep commissions up, we wouldn't be at five and four, right? We'd yeah. be at seven. We've been in a fight trying to do that internally with our company policies for the last five, six years. Right. Um, Last thing, Scott, uh, you and I had a conversation with an agent, oh my God, three, four months ago, and then uh, you and marketing got together and created a, a, a land right. acreage uh, link on our website just as of commercial and stuff like that. Can you talk a little bit about that? And these are things we're doing to try to help you look more professional. In yeah, so you know, we areas. had a big kind of hole in our in our presentation on the web about how you know what what business that we do and we have a few you know a few agents who do a lot of land deals a lot of farm and you know rec and and one of the complaints he was getting was is that uh, well you guys don't even you don't even have anything about your website on it you know it's like which is true you know we, we, we needed to do something and so we we put some at least uh, well, I don't know why I'm pointing it she's there yes yeah, sir thank God I didn't know where she was, I was losing so. my mind for <laughs> a second I'm pointing to a, a ghost um, that uh, you know that we you know that we, we built one out and now it's a, it's actually a portion on our website in the in kind of in the banner that you can see and it's you know farm ranch and lack and it, it's it it restricts it to just those properties that are you know kind of qualify for farm ranch you know rec it's got some industrial stuff on there too but it's it's really well not well done so you can you know if you've got land deals you can prompt it you know you can present it to your 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 uh, your sellers hey you know we have this stuff that we feature just just your exact type of property to show it's part of our part of our business and always has been but now it's more uh, open and obvious that we are we're you know we're focused on it and, and it's important to us thank you that is it a um, couple things Sarpy I, I guess Scott because you were part uh, instrumental part of this I apologize uh, our Sarpy County I office, got the thank you uh, Jay and Scott as of I guess this weekend, right. we have subleased that. We do not have the secondary office anymore. Right. Yeah, so don't go there. You're yes. not allowed in there. Do right. not go there because that's not our office. Your fob probably will not work to get right. in there. Um, but we have completely remodeled the other Sarpy office, and we actually think it looks better than the other one did. Much more modern, uh, very cool. We're going to have a open house this Thursday from 4 to 6. So love to have you come down there, look at the new office, and again, if you're in Council Bluffs, if you're in Sarpy, if you're in Lincoln, if you're in Re Midtown, we have all these offices. Your FOB will get you into any of those offices. Stop in there with clients. Use the conference rooms. Use the copiers and stuff like that. I guess on the copiers, Josh, you're in the, you're in the other room, but with the copiers, they need to get a hold of you if they're going to go to other offices just to make sure that their FOB will work on the copiers in other offices. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. All right. We have the man in the closet. Um, perfect. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate all those updates. A um, couple things. We have a uh, food, I guess it's, it's a food truck for coffee in the parking lot. So as soon as this is done, go down there and grab a, grab a, sorry, Scott, yeah. <laughs> uh, grab a coffee. It'll be down the parking lot here from 10 to 11. Is that right? 10 to 1030. 10 to 10 so as soon as we're done there, run down there and grab a coffee Tr <laughs> from DR Horton. They're supplying that for you. Uh, trunk or treat. Uh, we still need, tr I talked about this earlier. We need trunks. We need, uh, we're, we're halfway there. We got 10 of those committed. We need uh, chili and soup uh, cook-off people for the contest there. Uh, hopefully we have Terry because Terry won last year and, and people loved her stuff. Uh, and that again is going to be o Thursday, October 26th. So love to have you guys there. And then one final thing real quick is that um, for those who came late, mini explosion, um, uh, January 11th, Mark Stark, Andrew Undham, Matt Mullen are going to be here. It's going to, we want to pack this house. It's going to be a great way to kick off the year Thursday, January 11th. Please put that in there. 
but we're planning 10 to 2.30 or 3. We'll supply lunch here for you. Uh, but let's kick off the year right, which really starts with Jay's class starting this Thursday, and then January 11th, we will have those guys here, which will be an honor for us to, to host them. So, guys, go have a wonderful – did I miss anything, Aaron? We're, we're not doing the good guy today. Um, we're going to do it next time because the person wanted to be here to present it to Heather. We said you can't present it to Heather, so they have to pick someone else. <laughs> Say what? October 31st is the next sales meeting. Spooky. Guys, build relationships. Stay connected. There's business to be had. You guys are the best. We believe in you. Thank you very much.